There's a lot of a lot of numbers that are considered very auspicious for a variety of different reasons in numerology in the different the different sciences. And so whether it's three, whether it's nine, whether it's one zero eight that adds up to nine, all of these, you know, whether it's one, you'll notice in India, you know, if somebody's going to give you a gift, let's say, and they're going to give you 500 rupees, nobody's going to give you 500, they're going to give you 501, right? Or 5,001. You think, well, if you're giving somebody 5,000 rupees, like, why does it have to be 5,001, you know? But the number's considered very auspicious if there's the one on the end of it. And so I don't actually know all of the different historical reasons behind this number and that number and this number. But what we do know is, for sure, that regardless of whether it's a number that's auspicious, what we are doing with our attention and our focus and our heart is much, much more important than how many times we are doing it. And so you could take a mala, let's say, of 108 beads. Most of them are 108. The smaller ones are you know, 27, but um, a multiple of 108. Uh, you could take one of the, be the malas of 108, and you could chant your mantra the full 108 times. But if your mind was elsewhere, the fact that you've done it 108 times is virtually irrelevant. All you've done then is spun beads. You haven't really chanted a mantra. And so much more important than the actual number is the focus of the mind. If you can chant your mantra, 18 times, another very auspicious number, also adding to nine. If you can chant your mantra 18 times, 27 times, 54 times, however many times you can, with focus and attention and love, it's much, much more meaningful. Think about it. Think about having someone you love say to you, I love you. Right? Think about how that feels inside when someone looks in your eyes and just says, God, I love you. Right? Now, that's, that's only once. Now imagine how it would feel if someone said, I love you, 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 I love you. I love you, 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 I love you. I love you, I love you, right? Which would you prefer? Yeah, the first, right, of course. The point is the feeling. So if we if we are sensitive enough as human beings, to understand the distinction between saying something with love and meaning and saying it just to say it, certainly God is capable of that. And so, yes, these numbers are auspicious. And why not? I mean, you've got to do it a certain number of times anyway. So regardless of if we know why, if we know 18 is more auspicious, why not? If you're up at 17 already, do it another time. If you're at 19, go to 27. Why not? Right? I mean, the, it's been given to us for a reason. Whether we know the reason or don't know the reason, it's been handed down. Use the numbers. But more important than whether it's 18, 27, or 28, is the feeling behind it and the love behind it. And a mantra said once with love and feeling and connection to God 
I have to believe is worth way more than some auspicious number of times of recitations that were dry and with mindlessness. So focus, focus on that and do it as many times as you can, staying mindful. So whether it's 18 or whether it's 108, do it as many times as you can mindfully. One of the things I do personally when I'm chanting is literally I will make myself redo beads if I've lost my train of thought. If I find myself that my mind has wandered, I'll try to figure out approximately where how many I've done with a wandered mind. Then I'll add on another one just in case. And I'll go back. And there are days when I get through one mala because it takes me that long to get 108 conscious, mindful recitations. There are days I can get through several. But more important than the number is where the heart is. Because that's, that's what changes you. So we go around the temple to remind ourselves to keep God in the center. And what we know from the scriptures, from our saints, from our gurus. It's something that Puja Swamiji emphasizes constantly, is the importance of the intention of what you're doing and how if we go to God, whether it's sitting at the feet of a deity in a temple, whether it's walking around the deity, doing the parikrama, if I'm doing it because I want something, as he says, ishd ke paas list leke jate hain. I go to God with a list. I'm not, I'm not getting any of it. That benefit is not coming. God is not a vending machine. Oh, so it wasn't going to work 50 times, but you put in the extra 51, even though it still was mindless, no problem. It's not like that. A vending machine will give it to you. Put in the right amount of money, push the button, you'll get it out. But God's not like that. It's not about how many coins, how many rupees, how many rounds. It's about you. So yeah, the parikram is very important. It completes us. Because it reminds us, oh God, whatever I'm doing in my life, whatever I'm speaking, whatever I'm accomplishing, let me keep you in the center. I always think it's about me. I always want to be in the center. Let me keep you in the center. We go around. It's the same reason we sit around the yagna fire rather than, you know, in a line. We sit around it and we offer in to remind us, keep divinity in the center. And we just go around and around and offer in and offer in.